In this tutorial, we will look at some common questions in the topic of experimental techniques. Now, the first type of question you will get in this chapter involves selecting the correct apparatus for a certain measurement. So in this question, we are measuring a certain volume of hydrochloric acid being a solution, it's actually a liquid. So if we look at the volume required, it is 17.6 centimeter cube. So whenever you need accurate measurements to a decimal, then there's only one piece of apparatus that can allow that, which is a burette. The next question involves the use of a burette or how to take measurements using a burette. Now there's something unique about a burette. If you can recall, there is a tap at the bottom and when you open the tap, the liquid flows out. So because of that, if you look at the calibration in a burette, as you go down the burette, the number increases or the value increases. So that is something that's very important to keep in mind when you're trying to take a reading using a burette. So in this question, we are given two snapshots of the burette at the start and at the end of the titration, which corresponds to your initial reading and your final reading. So bearing in mind that as we go down, the number increases, the initial reading would be 22.4 centimeter cube and the final reading would be 27.3 centimeter cube. Now a common mistake that students make is to adopt the measuring cylinder mindset and think that this is 23.6 centimeter cube and that this is 28.7 centimeter cube. So bear in mind that these two readings are not correct. So now that we have the initial and final reading, how do we find the volume of acid being transferred is to take the final reading minus the initial reading and that would give us a value of 4.9. The next question involves drying and collection of gases. We have learned in the lessons that in order to know which method to use to collect a gas, we need to look at whether it's soluble in water, whether it's denser or less dense than air. And we have also learned in order to select the correct drying agent, we need to look at the character of the gas, meaning the, whether it's an acidic or basic character. So in this question, we are given a gas Y. We are told that it's less dense than air, very, very soluble in water, and it is an alkali. So based on what we have learned in lessons, the fact that it is very soluble, we cannot use displacement of water method because the gas is going to dissolve in water and you're not going to be able to collect it. So then we need to look at either upward or downward delivery since it's less dense than air. So we would have to use upward delivery. And now what? is left is to select the correct drying agent since it's an alkali. So we need to use the recommendation is to use an alkaline drying agent. And the alkaline drying agent in our syllabus would be calcium oxide. The next question is also on drying and collection of gases. However, this question is slightly more complicated because we are looking at a mixture of two gases and the two gases are hydrogen chloride and chlorine gas. So the question tells us that hydrogen chloride is very soluble in water, chlorine gas is only slightly soluble. Now the fact that we are given this information about the solubility means that it is important and is very likely needed in solving this question. If we read on in the question, the question tells us that we want to collect pure and dry chlorine that means that we need a setup that can remove hydrogen chloride from the mixture first and then followed by drying of the chlorine gas. So once again, hydrogen chloride is very soluble in water, so we can effectively remove it by bubbling the mixture of 
the two gases into water first. So with that in mind, we can narrow down our answers to either B or D because in the setup, the mixture was passed into water first. The next thing that we need to do is then to dry the chlorine gas and in this question, there's only one drying agent which is concentrated sulfuric acid. So in order to know which answer is correct, we then need to recall the setup required for the use of concentrated sulfuric acid as the drying agent. So from our lessons, we have learned that when we use concentrated sulfuric acid as the drying agent, the tube that carries the gas into the drying agent must be immersed into the sulfuric acid. So once you can recall that, that will allow us to decide that B is the correct answer.